What is good? Bang. And we're back. Jeez. Ready to roll. We got a final rookie mock of the season. So we got a 12-man super flex, tight end premium, full point PPR, uh, four-round dynasty mock here. Uh, we got the patrons and a couple of... Uh, couple of public guys there who have who have been you know foxing with us um so better fuck around don't fuck around you gotta fuck around you gotta fuck around to find out i'll save you the suspense here okay uh yeah so i mean obviously you know the first four five six you know pretty chalk at this point i think you know maybe there's somebody who's saying richardson over over Bijan, maybe there's somebody saying Gibbs over Stroud or Young or JSN over Stroud or Young, but typically from the drafts that I've been seeing and uh, you know early and now that we're doing late uh, rookie drafts, it, it's pretty much stayed the same. Bijan, Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, and Gibbs uh, all in one. It seems like Gibbs has taken over for JSN in almost every draft that I've seen, and when we had did the. Um, industry mock with all the all the goons from the industry i felt like a lot of people were pretty strong in gibbs even though they didn't like the fact that the uh the lions took a running back that high well if they take him though i gotta take him uh yeah so, I, don't, I hate that they did it they were so wrong but, but i'm now, gonna take him now i'm gonna do it uh but that's what we've been seeing in these later drafts and you know there will be some i think some changes maybe just from preseason camp pipe all that and we'll, we'll go over some of that but um like i said the top six mostly staying the same here yeah give me gibbs over jason i think i gotta do that i, right. I, I, I mean, think i'm pretty much in that camp regardless well. right rebuild mode whatever you I, still i think so i think the I don't think you can go wrong either way, but true, um, true. You know, which uh, JSN did look good this preseason. The short, uh, why they got him back there for returning punts, I, I don't know. But yeah, well, now he breaks he, his hand. Now he's got a wrist. Um, so you know, we'll see what kind of plays out there. And then, you know, the next guys have have all pretty much stayed the same now in this particular draft. Um, we did see Dalton Kincaid overtake Flowers, um, but uh, one once one five was Gibbs, one six was JSN, one seven is Addison. One eight is Quentin Johnston. One nine is Dalton Kincaid, and then one ten is Zay Flowers. So here, you know, I probably have a, a slight disagreement. I'm taking Flowers over Quentin Johnston and Kincaid here. Um, so I would put Flowers at the one eight. I, I we've been big proponents of Flowers. He he'd be a guy like in redraft that I would be drafting to try to you know hit it out of the park with. I think he can by the season by mid season he could just be. The guy who everybody's oohing and aahing over. Jordan Addison stays in front of him just because I think that the setup for him and the system just seems a little more automatic. Like, hey, he is going to go right into a wide receiver two role, and that's going to be perfect for him. He basically can't double him. He's just going to be singled up. I, and, and Thielen was second on that team in targets. Uh, you know, Hawkinson's been kind of holding in. Uh, being vague about what's going on, so who, who really knows what's going on there? But Jordan Addison uh, is just going to come in and, and you know probably lead all rookies in, in fantasy points. Uh, so Flowers, Addison will be the guys that I'm that I'm taking in, in redraft, uh, and as well as uh, dynasty. dynasty for these next batch of receivers. So you got Addison still over Zay. You can't yeah. Go that I, far. I, 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 if now I don't have a problem with it. I'm not I'm not being like hey trade that's egregious because but, Zay could just. They, I mean, look what he did. Obviously, it's well, yeah. preseason. Well, that's, I let maybe it not off. the starters on the other side, sure. but Jesus, that dude was just like, it looks. It looked easy, like it was right. child's play right. out there for him. Almost. And I let it off that way because you know I do feel like Zay could by the end of the year be the guy like, oh my god, and yeah. and, and maybe Addison doesn't quite get the oh my god, but the yeah. production's real steady, right? Uh, where you know Flowers is going to give you that, but Addison's going to give you break ankle highlights too, but it just might not be some of the same things you see with Zay. Um, could be a little bit more of the focal point of that offense where Justin Jefferson's, you know, still going to be the focal point of that offense. But I think that greatly uh, helps Addison out. So uh, but then, I, you know, if you wanted to take Kincaid over Quentin Johnston, uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't battle you there. Um, I think he's going to be second in line in targets uh, in Buffalo. And this is premium that we're talking. Um, so one point five here as, you know, uh, up to two. In in your preferred league, if that's how you like to play, if it's two, then you're definitely taking them. I'm definitely taking them over Quentin Johnson, at, at, and and you know maybe could even argue taking them over that batch of receivers there. But at one and a half, 
Uh, I'll slide him in here. I'll, I'll go. I'll go Kincaid um, right after Quentin Johnston. Um, but I know some people are really thinking Quentin Johnston is going to be in the bust. I know you know a lot of people have been hating on him already, but. You know, I, th- I think he landed in a really good situation. I don't know that he's going to, he's cert- I don't think he's going to take off like Addison and Flowers did, uh, but I think you're, there's going to be enough there. I think this offense is going to be, you know, one of the better, you know, putting points up at a high clip. The, the Cowboys, when Kellen Moore was running them, were always up in the top of the uh, leaderboards of, of pretty much all the, the scoring and, and passing stats and yardage and all that kind of stuff. And they have a much better quarterback. Uh, I was kind of listening to Kellen Moore talk about it and how he's been with Dak for so long. He kind of, it's nice for him to come. He, he played with Dak. He backed Dak up. He knows Dak so well. Back Dak up. So back Dak ass. It's up. nice to come in here and just really not know any, you know, except for the fact that Herbert's awesome. You know, I think you're going to see more explosive plays, which was the knock of, of Lombardi there. Uh, and I and think my Quentin man Johnston hurt himself early in the year, Herbert. And, and right. was it his ribs maybe? And like, it was hard to get. Yeah. I mean, and he has a beautiful deep ball and then those wide receivers kind of can't stay healthy. It's, it was rare that they were both on the field at the same time, almost like their whole entire career. Yeah. I feel like and you bring in Quentin, he can replace kind of either one of them i mean he, he does a little he does something different than they do we've, we've talked about that a lot we talked about it on the the profile video that we did for quentin johnson and we were pretty high on him maybe he claps the ball a little bit probably gonna have some drops here and there probably gonna break off some flashy fucking awesome down the field right. plays where he, he's gonna have yak as well you right know? he's gonna have some down the field plays because i, I just feel like how can't you with this cast of characters surrounding him Keenan is going to absolutely crush yeah and Mike Williams always is good if he's on the field um, and, and dangerous and you kind of have those two contrasting styles which I think Quentin Johnson can do a little gets bit to of learn those, from gets too. to learn and you know I, I don't think Kellen Moore is an idiot you get the bar you know you get the ball in Quentin Johnson's hands that's yeah. why you got like him so much you got to take away some of the other stuff yes he needs to learn some other things but there aren't that many guys he I, I said you know in my, in my breakdown of for, for TikTok it was you know he's a unicorn let's just you know let's hope he's not a donkey and a uni in a unicorn outfit here uh and he's got a unicorn outfit the, on the, the, the right the unicorn part is there's not a whole lot of guys who are that big who move the way he does and the yak is so good like so right off the rip play to the things that he does and develop him doing the other things and i think that's what we'll see so uh you know i don't have any problem with quentin johnston uh I, you know this whole first round ends up being and really the whole first, second round for a draft class that you know, people weren't super high on and, you know, every year at a, at a point it's sell your picks for the next year. Cause that's going to be awesome. And I, you know, I think, uh, through two rounds here, especially super flex, uh, really, really solid. Maybe the quarterback class isn't great. And the running backs are, are just, you know, not stellar, but you know, you got two really, really good ones. And then, you know, foreshadowing to the next pick here at 110 or 111, uh, you got Charbonnet. And I, at this point, I think Sharbs has solidified himself, for me, um, <clears throat> as the next running back that goes, um, if, if you wanted to argue that A-Chain goes here, uh, I don't think I can make the argument for Kendra right now. Uh, but, you know, just as everybody was getting down on Kendra, we saw preseason action, a 40-yard wheel where he catches it. The next play uh, <clears throat> runs it right up the gut uh, for, for a touchdown. So Kendra stock, I, I felt like, went down and then just, you know, came back right up to where it was so you know might might be a minute but i, I feel like he's a, a very good all-around player but kendra probably a little bit behind charbonnet right now uh kenneth walker missing pretty much the whole preseason here uh, you know i think kenneth walker's going to be just fine as long as he's healthy he, he's you know a home run hitter but charbonnet here at, at 111 has been the stock rb3 for me uh in these later drafts it's a pretty easy pick i mean just feel Titan- safe you with can, tight end you're premium, you're gonna be able to start him for the most part and not feel bad about it, and then he'll have some big games. With tight end premium, I could see you maybe going Laporta or Mayor here. You know, well, so that you know, I, I I I say that to say that I would take Laporta and Mayor over him in most cases. If I, you know, I I did just take Charbonnet over Laporta and Mayor in a, in a, but I'm I'm ready to go, and I, I I need an RB. My my tight end room is is very very solid. And I know you draft. 
you know, you don't draft for need in these things. But in this case, I, I think it kind of fits. And I think you can make an argument. And I don't think it's egregious. Like, you're going crazy. I would normally take uh, Laporta <clears throat> or Mayer over him. But I was just kind of saying he is the RB3 and he kind of went next. So, yes, I would take Laporta and Mayer at, at 11 and 12 for the most part. But there are times, like I said, I'm, I won... Uh, two or three years ago, I've been in second and third in this league. I, I got bounced from the playoffs this year, uh, came in fourth because I didn't have a quarterback come uh, playoff time. I had I had Kyler and uh, then I forget who I had else, but they got hurt too. And it was like, I'm over there starting Davis Mills, uh, you know, in a in a two round, two week playoff and, you know, didn't get it done. So I'm, I'm right there again. I can I can run it back. So Sharbs uh, made some sense when. My tight end room is, is pretty solid already. So might come back to bite me, but I, I did that there. So I'm not saying I, I, I always would go that way, but for the most part, Laporta and Mayer ahead of them. And then you actually did something interesting here. So Charbonnet at 11, Laporta at 12, and then at 2-1, you went Levis here. I thought that was, you know, a little a little egregious at this point. What was, what was your thoughts there? E- egregious to take Will Levis in, in a super flex draft? Yeah, I just I think I think right now I think there's just there's five or six more guys here that I that I feel like I got to take before Levis at this point. I mean, obviously he's got he had the thigh injury here, so he, he didn't play in this last preseason game. But Willis has put together a, a pretty nice preseason and looked just leaps and bounds better than where he was, and and could be short sighted here. And Levis is a, is a high pick, but at this point I, I just feel more comfortable with. Uh, Mayer, I would take Kendra. Uh, I would take Rice, Mims, uh, A Chain, Mingo, and then and then I'm fine with taking Levis. And and in two years it could be like ah whatever you know. But <clears throat> I probably could trade for Levis in that time. While you know if, if he ends up being the QB three, I know in San Francisco that was just the biggest deal fucking ever. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if well, he not ends because up, it was good. If he ends up being the QB three, you know, I, I think there could be you know a little bit of maybe he does. Meat on the bone there, and I don't think it really matters who's the QB two or nah. three there right now. Uh, I just I I would go a different direction at 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 this point, at least until you know two six or so. Um, I mean, I with what you said, I, I don't disagree. I could easily have taken any of those guys over here. I think this is especially in Superflex a great spot to try and trade back. You know, just keep trying to pick up a little something to move back here. I took Levis because I feel like well, if I'm at the one one then my team's probably not super great. Obviously, there's drafts where you play for the 1-1, so it's a little bit different there, which I'm, you know, I could go either way on what type of draft you have where you, I guess the last place team probably should get the first pick, but then you got to worry about tanking, but you make them start their best projected player. I mean, you just figure out how to make them not tank. You got to let you got to well, start this guy. You know, you, you, with, with, and the with, trick is to tank. Obviously you just sell your good players. You sell playing, your running back. But with, with playing for it, usually it means you're getting, if you're the worst team in the league, you're getting a top four pick. True. But there's a big difference between Bijan and, certainly and can, it four. It certainly can be. But, uh, I just figured I, I'm probably not a great team. I can take Will Levis. I'm not going to get anything out of him this year. It's not a play for attitude. the future. I mean, maybe I do, but it's a play for the future. I don't really want to get anything out of him. Not a great team. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's probably not. I'm picking one, right? I just got Bijan. How much better can that I mean, make my team? The, the other argument for playing for the one is like, hey, if I, had, if I have Saquon and CMC and they get fucking injured and then you're getting the 1-1 just because you got some bad luck that year, it's, there's really a not a great situation there, really. I, I, you know, so. It is what it is. Right. You know, you all agree on it. Right. Do it. Right. You want to vote to change it, do it. But like. That's I've been I've seen it all and then that's what happens. So I'm just assuming I don't have a great team, and let me just go ahead and get a, a future player. It's a quarterback. It's a super flex league. The quarterbacks have a ton of value. It's twelve man league, so I can turn Will Levis into something else. You know he's a he's a trading piece. He's a good piece, and I didn't know what to do with all those players there. Couldn't pick one. I guess I, I guess it'd be Mayor out of all those guys, but I, I'm not. I, I really want to take uh, a chain, and I really want to take Rice and. I really like Spears and Kendry. I couldn't take Spears over Kendry. Kendry's a great pick. Good play for the future, too. Not a bad play. My team's bad. Maybe take Kendry, stash him away. Wait, because in a year, Kamar's out of there. He could be just hot. So, yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> I took Mayer at 2 2. I don't know how egregious it was, I, but I, whatever. I think it's a little, <laughs> a little egregious. Uh, I took Mayer at the next pick. Like I said, I, I, I like him in the first round still. And then, you know, but. Either way, uh, Kendra two three, 
still love Kendra. It might not be an immediate play. We'll, you know, hopefully he plays well in weeks one through three, gives himself a little mm. role. Uh, I, I think he's already a better player than Jamal Williams. I think Jamal Williams is, is, a, is a good player, a good, fun guy. He, he serves a certain role, but I think Kendra Miller is, is, is head and shoulders uh, going to end up being a much better player than he is and probably keep him off the field uh, a good bit. Maybe not throughout his entire rookie career, but by year two, uh, and and I think this is you know Kendra Miller's team, uh, and and just a good all around player. Like I said, good pass catcher, uh, can grind it out a little bit. Got good quickness, pretty good top end speed. So I think everything's there. We didn't get to see it because it wasn't at the combine. But if you watch the tape, there's all sorts of tells about that. There there is good speed there. There's great quickness there. Um, so you know. I'm I'm a bit a big Kendra guy. He he would have up he would have been my my RB three for a while, uh, but he's he's since slid probably back behind Sharps at this point. Um, just feel a little bit more comfortable about the situation, even though that sounds wild and in one year might not matter. All right, so the next pick here, uh, J Mike is up, and we know what it is. If you've been messing with us for a while, J Mike a patron, J Mike putting out his own content, J Mike just the perennial proverbial great human being mm-hmm. uh, crushes. Always, nicest guy on Twitter. Always the best to talk to. So shout out to J Mike. Uh, but he takes this guy tank here. Um, and, and that's not an indica- not he, he's the one guy that I could say that's not an indictment on ET. I don't believe. I think that's yeah. just, that's a that's a he likes tank Bigsby a and lot. The Jags. And, and the Jaguars. Um, so, you know, tank got some standalone value for sure. And if anything happens, and has to looked ET, good in the preseason. Yeah, right. Look good in the preseason. He was a back end of the second round guy here for you know and in the drafts that we did just two months ago yeah and now uh you know a lot people of people are remembering how much they hate et <laughs> right a lot and, <laughs> and, and he's shown well and, and you know that there's gonna so i think there is standalone value and uh huge upside uh if anything should happen i don't feel ET. like there's a crazy it's not gonna be bankable standalone value like you know uh, like there, there'll I mean, probably it, be some touchdowns and and Maybe some decent stuff, but I feel like I'm not like I still don't think I could count on my man. Like if you're playing the the zero RB and that's like yeah, you're I mean, stacked I, everywhere else, he's not the worst RB two ever. I think I think, but I think he'll be he'll be mostly startable. Um, you know, I don't. It's not who I want to have to absolutely rely on, yeah. but I mean, I think when you need him, you could probably plug him in, and they'll you know. And if like I said, God forbid anything happens. It, T-T. Right, true. Uh, there'll be some catches. Uh, you know, I think he'll, he, he's got the ability to break off some good runs. And, you know, I, I've been a big Tank Bigsby supporter this entire time. So it's it's crazy to me that that was not the case for yeah. the longest time. Uh-uh. You know, nobody, there was not this many people in on Tank Bigsby in the draft process. Yes, huh? I would, I, Peter, yes, huh? Peter Howard, I guess, <laughs> would, would disagree. Um, you know. Good. Did you at him? Good for him. I don't know. <laughs> he took that shit real personal, though, for some reason. Like, I was coming at him. But for yeah. real, like, I talked to a lot of guys pre-draft. We did that whole uh, industry mock. Nobody was jocking, jocking Jay-Z. Jock, yeah. Uh, Tank Bigsby. Yeah. And, you know, and now it's it's come around and it's like, oh, you know what? Tank, Tank was a good, pretty good prospect, you know? And it was like, but before he couldn't keep Hunter off the field. So he stinks, uh, you know, but... Big fan of Tank there. So Spears goes next. He's been great in the preseason. Uh, he was he was for sure behind Rice and Mims and Mingo. And I think for the most part still is. This was a little bit of a weird draft here. Uh, but, that you know, that's, again, that's why we do these mocks and, and try to show them to you because it's not always chalk and your draft isn't always going to go chalk. Like Spears went a little ahead here. Megatron uh, was feeling it. He wanted some Spears. Spears has looked absolutely awesome with him. There's Lieutenant Dan like magic legs, uh, you know, doesn't have an ACL, but it doesn't stop him. Uh-uh. He doesn't well, it, care. Don't tell him. It didn't in college either. So don't tell him. He probably got them stemmies in there. Nice. Yeah. Those aren't cheap. Mm-mm. You got to go. You got to go down to uh, Peru or, uh, you know, you across the Quran, right? No. Go down to South America. Probably you can go. go to like, I think Kobe went to Germany. And yeah, I think Andrew there. Luck might have went over. But, uh, you know. A lot of good that did Andrew Luck. Uh, yeah, but anyway, Spears Stemmies won't keep you from getting hit. Spears looks good, and I think Spears is going to have a little bit of standalone value as well. He's shown great. He gives them something different. He's a good pass catcher. They're already down some pass catchers. Yeah, no um, shit. And he he's looked the part already out there. Uh, so you know, I think Tank's going to or uh, Spears is going to get a little love to go early. And and again, a, a favorite of ours. If it wasn't for the ACL, um, kind of 
news and and sat he would have been up there with the, the Kendrys mm-hmm. and the Charbonnets. I think that highly of him. But you do it does concern you a little bit. But I mean, at this point, let's go. We're we're playing in three year windows. Let me get it. Uh, let me get the Spears there. So, uh, you know, I, I you like that over uh, a chain. Uh, no, well, we'll get to a chain in yeah. a second. I think, I think you probably need to take a chain, but yeah. So Hyatt went at two, six rice went at two, seven, a chain at two, nine Mims at, or uh, a chain at two, eight Mims at two, nine Mingo at two, 10. So I think you could take M- Mims just had a great game. Jerry, Judy potentially could miss some time to start the season. We know Patrick's out of there. We know Hamler's out of there. So Mims is, is really, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And, you never wish for injuries, but it's going to help Mims get on the field a little more. He was great. He's great in the preseason, great in this last preseason game. Um, so if you wanted to take Mims ahead of Spears, Mingo ahead of Spears, Rice ahead of Spears, and all those guys as well ahead of Tank Bigsby, and some people are taking them in front of Kendra, you know, I, I don't think you're wrong for that. Now, I would not uh, take Jalen Hyatt there at 2-6, but some people's thought process is, hey, I'm in the middle of the second round of a, of a rookie draft. Who, what's the splashiest, biggest difference maker, home run hitter I could hit right here? And if that's what you're going for, then it's Jalen Hyatt. And we've already seen it. We saw on the first play of that Jets game, he hit sauce with the double move and cooked him and cooked him. Then now a play later or two plays later, sauce broke, you know, PBU. Yeah. Um, so, but we, you saw, you see the elite speed and we've seen it a few times in the preseason how long that'll take to be every down and and count you know you can count on it every week i'm not sure but great system uh great coach great scheme somebody that we feel comfortable with so all those things add up and you know i think danny dimes is taking steps forward here and they 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 need a another another you know weapon and hyatt could be it now I, i would i'd push hyatt down near the back of this round uh for me so and a chain, you know, if you wanted to take a chain at two one, if you wanted to take a chain, I think in this particular draft, there's the JT news. The Dolphins have seemingly been well. He just got hurt too. He well, he had hurt he, his shoulder and the, and the JT a little, news a little dinged up. And then the Dolphins are after were after uh, Dalvin. The Dolphins have now been right tra- multiple trade offers to the Colts. Right, so they're trying to find somebody else. It would seem. Uh, so that's not going to be. They're open to it. They're right. very open to it. And why would you be? not going to overpay, though. That, why wouldn't you be? Uh, you yeah, know, I mean, if, yeah, fuck yeah. If you can get the, JT, JT on, on the market? Team, oh, yeah. shit. You better fucking call. Right. Right. You should see what you could do Especially there. Especially if you're like, good. So what do you do with A-Chain now? You didn't take him there. Does is, is, is he have you a little worried? Is that. I mean, seeing him get picked up and body slammed like that and dislocating his shoulder or whatever, it was like, ah, that's. That's it. That's the risk. That's the risk you take. But the play, <laughs> right? That right. he got and, hurt and, on, and, and you know that was just a little bit so of a jittery of a sh- uh, of a shithade play. Like he didn't need to do all that. that was kind of extra. Uh, but oh, well, I mean that's just gonna happen. Well, and it was it was just like a long, prolonged yeah. thing of it. Like you know, I'm not that worried Did about he spin that. Spin him around <laughs> and then <laughs> right. hit him over the knee. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know, a spine buster. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I just what what. What, what I saw in college was similar stuff to that. Like the, the good is the good is very yeah, good. Yeah. But when he would just get dead stopped by yeah. by those bigger SEC hyper athletic teams, yeah. that's when you're like, ah. But you know, hey, I like Spears. Spears doesn't weigh a whole lot. I like Gibbs. Gibbs doesn't weigh a whole lot. You know, we're you know CMC playing weight is probably you know closer to that that two hundo. He's put on like five uh, pounds of muscle every. I mean, he's yoked you know? uh, and. And, you know, James Cook is, you know, somewhere around there. But so, you know, I don't, I don't want to get terribly caught up in it. If, if it's if it's true that a chain's already up, you know, a couple pounds and could put a couple more pounds on, it's probably fine. It's a really, really fun pick. We're talking about home runs and hitting them, you know, at, at some point. And once we get into the second round, I know it's silly, but a chain. Sure. Uh, could have easily went two one, two, 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 three over all those receivers and all those running backs that went in this round so far. So uh, I think, you know, there's just reasons uh, to on top of the the reasons that we're in the whole draft cycle and the whole prospect thing to be a little worried about a chain, but uh, I think he he should probably be ahead of most of these guys in the second round. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just glad he's not going in the middle of the first. Like Jesus, right? So that happened in one of our drafts. Someone reached up above uh, uh, two out of those three really good, re- three out of those four really good receivers. He just, I actually no, I think Quentin Johnson was on the board and he took a chain. I was just like, man, 
he's been he's pushing trying to get a running back and it's like ah. I like taking him because he's still there and available two one in this draft sure anywhere from two one to where he went I'm fine with that uh it has it, his stock has taken a little turn down it's a wrong time for him you know he got hurt and then all this JT stuff right after Dalvin and he's dodged all these bullets but we still don't know what's happening with JT, JT as of today right I didn't miss anything and so he's actually dropping a little bit like I think that's good. You can now get him where you might not have been able to if your draft was like a week earlier. Yeah, you know because we just did another our second home league draft, and he still hasn't gone off the board. And I think Big Co's on the clock at one twelve right now. I don't know if he's gonna take him or Mayor. He's basically he's trying yeah. to get me to take trade me to get Mayor, and I'm like, man, I I like Mayor. I like A Chain. I like Rice. I like Mims. I, I might try. You want to give me that pick all together, or I can trade back. Like I don't right. necessarily need to pay you to come up. Because uh, he wants like 4-1, and I'm like, ah, I probably could get a fun little stab there. I don't know if it's worth it for me. I got a not a great team, although if everybody stayed healthy and crushed. <laughs> right. But I have like no depth right, right. and some older pieces that I probably I've been trying to figure out how to move. But, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I did play my way into the first overall pick and get Bijan, so Yoj. we'll see what happens. But. That's what you call two C's and an H right there. Yeah. Clutch, Crucial, and Yoj. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You know, I, I think uh, <laughs> stupid. I've never heard that dumb uh, shit before. <laughs> Could have gone without it. I think. I, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think at two ten there. I think after two ten now. You know, Hyatt could for me would probably be back here at two ten. Yeah, um, yeah. But, I can't. I mean, it. He could easily have been like, oh shit, should have taken Hyatt, which I was at least this whole offseason. Be like, I kind of like Hyatt. I had we had a rally by master on, and he was like, not having it. The boys are not having. It. I was like, I don't know. I mean. It's He's looked fun, pretty good. It's a fun, splashy <laughs> pick, and, and you know, like I said, it's and the a good name, the name uh, value, you know, like he, he could, and, and then the coach there, like it could really just, yeah. I mean, I, He's I on just, our breakout list, like he could, right, just escalate. Sure, and that's why, that's why I'm, you know, I get it there. I would, I would move him back though, and then you got Jaden Reed going here at two eleven, Roshan uh, going at at two twelve, um, and then, uh, you know, Cedric Tillman. And Luke Musgraves go at three one three two, uh, and I'm, I'm going to mention that. And then three four or three three is Aiden O'Connell, Sh- the uh, schoonmaker, shoemaker, schoolmaker. Th- still not sure how to say it. <laughs> Somebody told us on YouTube. Um, uh, then I think this is something like Schoonmacher. And then uh, Downs, Dell, and Wilson. And now we'll go back and talk about some of that. But I think you know the draft to me <clears throat> at this two eleven uh, ish spot really starts to take shape of like, all right, who, who do you like? Who are you taking? And I think there's some jockeying around here to do. Roshan, obviously, <clears throat> if you want to take him um, ahead of any of those other uh, Jaden Reed or, or Hyatt or whatever, I'm fine with that. Take him at the back end of the second, down with it. Um, but Luke Musgraves, to me, I talked about it in the beginning of August, uh, maybe even at the end of July there. Uh, I, th- I said that th- there's a chance by the time we're doing home leagues and by the time we're doing these rookie drafts that he's going to be in the middle of the 2-5, two, 2-6 two, range with with tight end premium drafts. And I, I th- that that's he's moved way up. Every draft that I've done, everybody's going after uh, Musgraves. Everybody wants him. Uh, in the last two weeks, Musgraves has just been exploding, and it's because he's just he's he's the starter for the Packers. He's uber athletic. He's playing a ton of snaps in the preseason with the first team offense. We thought maybe Kraft could get in there. Kraft drops all the way down to four eleven in this draft, where he was Musgraves and him were kind of <clears throat> jockeying. It was always Musgraves ahead, but people were like, ah, I could take Kraft and, and get maybe Kraft will start, but Musgraves has got it. Uh, I think Musgraves should be up here in this second round and be bumping uh, Hyatt. Uh, Reed and Roshan back a little bit. Um, he he's just if if you're if, again, I know there's a lot of anti tight ends guys. There's probably be some tight end chatter in this. We've talked about it a million times in the off season, so I didn't want to bludgeon you to death again with the tight end talk. Basically, you can't ever take one right until you can. Uh, and uh, you know, I just got a in one of the drafts I was just doing. I just got a a deal done because I traded a fucking tight end with the deal. Uh, and you, you can't take just, a tight end uh, until there's a good clip on Twitter of them playing well. Then you can act like you like them. Right. Exactly. 
pers- nailed it. Um, <laughs> but Mus- mostly never take a tight end. Musgrave should Mus- be up two here. Point premium. Fine with Musgrave. Uh, I think he should be up in the second yeah. round. Should be middle of the second round. I think it's it's a fantastic pick. Um, he he could easily come out right away and be as valuable as Laporta, Kincaid, or Mayer. Uh, that that quick. Um, and he's crazy. Rascor was on our breakout uh, rookie thing that we did. Um, so I, I think for me Travis to get Kelsey comp, right? For me to get rats. him there at, at three two, I thought that was absolutely bananas um, and shouldn't shouldn't be happening. Uh, Jaden Reed, I'd take I would take Musgraves over Jaden Reed. Seems to be the starting slot for Green Bay. Made has made some some good plays throughout the preseason. I think it's going to be you know probably Watson and and uh, Romeo dominant with a little Musgraves and and Reed will have his Mister Reed. We'll have his spots, um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a bad pick. I'm not anti him. Um, I, I do like Tank Dell a little more than him, so I would move Tank Dell up there. I would move Josh Downs up ahead of him a, a little bit, or at least comparable um, to them. I'd get those guys a little closer because they're that mid uh, third area. So I would get those guys closer to the top of the third. I'd move Aiden O'Connell back. I'd move the Schoonmaker uh, back a little bit here. Um, and I'd get, you know, Michael Wilson as well up in that group. Uh, all, all guys, I'm very interested in that third turn. When you get to anywhere from, you know, I think 210 to, you know, three, four, five is is a lot of fun with all those receivers. Mm-hmm. And Tillman is the guy you took at 3-1. Uh, so you took Tillman over Musgraves, over Downs, over Dell, over Wilson. What, what were the thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I, I like taking Tank Dell. I think I, I want Tillman first. Michael Wilson... I can't argue with you. Still want Tillman over, yeah, I guess, all those guys. Maybe I should have taken Downs or Musgrave, I think. I'll take Musgraves, and then I'm fine with Tillman. Uh, I just – you, you didn't uh, see much from Tillman his senior year because he was hurt, and then he comes out in the preseason and looks he's, like – He's had good ga- – Junior good year games. Yeah. Tillman, you know, or, right. or, or two years Big. ago Tillman. And can make plays downfield, you know, and, and Deshaun yeah. hit him with that nice move down there, and it was like, oh, you're starting to see it. That's another play – you might have to wait a minute. They got yeah. they got a receiving core that looks pretty fucking good, and I, it might take Deshaun a second here. The dude, <laughs> he makes one mistake in practice. It's all over Twitter. Like yeah. people hate him so much. It's wild. They cannot wait. And then, like he tried to hand it off to the running back or something, and the guy totally fumbled it. And like this is Deshaun Watson. They, they had it's two. Like, they had two uh, bad fumble with uh, an exchange yeah. in this last preseason game. But, I mean, Chubb's going to be in there. Everything's going to be just... Well, my takeaway from that shit was, like, this offense is about to be a fucking nail-biter with Nick Chubb in there because Watson was moving around. There was a couple times where you could tell he probably wanted to take off and then threw it into a spot that was just, all you know, okay. And then other times where he did take off and, and made a nice mm-hmm. throw. I, I I just, you know, there's probably... There are going to be some downs. There's downs with every fucking quarterback. But this offense... Elijah Moore was, you know... I feel like they could target him as much as they want to, um, you know. And then Amari got... a deep shot down there with it with a rollout a breakaway from a sack from um watson from watson so you know and, and you saw a big shot to, to dpj right in the beginning of that game and that's going to be you know dpj tillman uh probably vying for a similar role i think tillman will, will rotate in um i i saw people saying that they're going to bring back dpj and i'm like it just doesn't make any sense why you're bringing back dpj they did just I mean, trade I like for, him they did just trade for pierre strong uh, which is interesting for that. I think part of that was because the rest of their backfield outside of Felton and John Kelly, who I don't think they want to start John Kelly necessarily. And Felton, I think, you know, has looked good out there. But Ford hasn't played really at all in this preseason. And we can get another guy on this roster uh, with Ford. Kareem Hunt couldn't have been that expensive. I'm like, what are they doing? They're just <laughs> re- ready to do something else. And, you I know, guess. So. I mean, what? Like, Right. I, you know, I don't know. I think, think they'll be, stay I think healthy, they'll be fine. I guess, but um, so this doesn't make sense. Or maybe they just don't think they they think Kareem's lost a little bit, so they're just going to go with something else. So anyway, Aiden O'Connell here at three three was the big jump up. Um, but I mean that's preseason. This is your boy James W. The master mocker. Well, yeah, and and you know I, I'm I would take Wilson, Dell, Musgraves. Uh, you know if Roshan or Reed or any of those guys were back here, Tillman, I'll take all those guys. But then after that. I have absolutely no problem taking Aiden O'Connell. He has looked fantastic in the preseason. He's looked calm, cool, collected. Um, and, you know, the guy standing in front of him is Jimmy G, who is already not the, G for glass. The, 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 you know, doesn't stay healthy necessarily and already just not a fan favorite. 
Um, and, and Aiden's played really, really well. Exactly what you want to see from a rookie. Just doesn't seem bothered um, and, and looks, looks good out there doing it. And, you know, hey, is he a is fourth or fifth round pick or whatever? And there's, so there's no way he could be good. Uh, I think we're, you know, about to see, you know, a couple of fourth or fifth round quarterbacks here uh, be, be pretty good here in the near future. Um, but Aiden, you know, I would bump him back to the middle of the third there. But, yeah, I, 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 I don't dislike it. I like the shot. We're in the third. By week six, he could have way more value than half that the whole second round. Uh, you know, he could be worth a, a two with the quickness, uh, Aiden O'Connell, uh, if, if anything happens to Jimmy and, and he continues to look all right with with all the ones. Uh, so big, big mover from preseason action. Uh, then we have Chase Brown at three, eight like that. Uh, Puka at three, nine. There's no chance he could be good. So I'm not even sure why you're drafting him <laughs> uh, because he's a later round receiver and no historical metric has ever been in his favor. But I think that's fucking real silly draft they away for Puka Nakua. Love him. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to be awesome. Go, let's go. Or at least here's the thing with guys like that. When there's guys out there telling you not to draft these guys because there's no way he'll ever be good. Maybe he won't ever be good, but there's a, 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 a better than not chance that he has a value spike or at worst, you could re retread that three week six in the season for Puka. If that's what you want to do. I, I just, I just don't think it's a terrible swing. Uh, I think he, he's, probably going to get on the field for them van jefferson hasn't stayed healthy uh throughout a season and you know that's their second wide receiver slow it uh what's his name skaronic, skaronic uh you know and, and cooper cup and higby you know so it's like shit yeah and then they, they've been talking shit yeah man talking a lot of puka so don't get distracted by that it's fine take a receiver here and i you know is he going to be turned into a, a top 24 receiver? No, most likely not. But I think there's enough, there's a value spike and value available for him to move up and you can get out from under him. It's just the same talk as the tight ends. Are, are all of them going to be awesome? No, but they're, they're going to hold value for long enough to use them in a trade or, or uh, ha see the value go up at some point and cash out and, and do your thing. So, I, you know, I, I have no problem with Puka. I think it's a silly conversation. Uh, Stetson Bennett, 310. You know, we like some Stetson around here. Um, Zach Evans, 311. You know, we like some Zach Evans around here. And then Tucker, um, you know, I, if I have no problem with Tucker in the third at this point, he seems like he's uh, could could end up being the RB2 pretty quick in, in Tampa there. Uh, and, you know, because of a medical thing, didn't, didn't get drafted. Uh, but I love that pick at 312 there. Then you come back and take a uh, sex worker, old Hendon Hooker. Uh, so... You know, just again a long play for for the one one team that isn't you know isn't going to be great, and I I don't hate that shot there. Yeah, um, I mean, who else are you looking at? I would have taken next. Evan Hull. Um, yeah, because if if and if you wanted well, to take, yeah, if you wanted to take Hull now. at three eleven or three twelve, even when we were doing this draft, they were there was just so much JT chatter that Evan Hull right now is 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 the best shot you could take uh, in the third round as far as a running back goes because the. If anything happens to JT, he doesn't play. He doesn't do that. Hull has looked good in the preseason. This last game, he looked really good. He can catch. He can run. And th th there's th that flip for a two is just on the tip of your fucking fingers right there. The flip for a two from Hull is is right there. The same reason that these guys came on in the industry mock and told us to draft the running backs later. Hull is a prime example of that, that it's it could turn into nothing. And just be a you know a pretty good backup who carves out a decent role behind JT, or they trade him and Hull you know has a nice run this season, and that that's a that's a quick flip for a two uh, with Hull. So you know I I would probably take Hull, and I could have taken him over Evans, Bennett, Tucker, Puka, uh, and and you know if you wanted to go over Chase Brown, I guess that would be fine because the, the flip ability seems you know flip 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 Philadelphia. Um, Clayton Tune there at four one. Ah, that's probably not for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm four, three, four, three. Um, there's probably some, some other shots I would take there. Uh, Demario Douglas, Xavier Hutchinson. I know those are receivers, so we don't want those guys, but uh, fine with that. I could take Eric Gray there. You know, they just brought in, they just traded for Josh Dobbs. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, I don't know who's going to be doing what, uh, if you want to take the shot on tune, he was a favorite of ours. Uh, before any trade happened there, uh, so I don't know if that was before the Dobbs trade or after the Dobbs trade when the, we did this draft somewhere around there. But I like Eric Gray. Deuce Vaughn seems like your quintessential fourth-round stab on a, on a 
running back. Is it going to work out? I don't know. But the guy's been an outlier his entire life. And is he out there getting beat up by or getting beat up by accountants and 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 guys who are going to sell insurance? Uh, no, he's out there making those guys look real dumb. And yeah, is he playing in the fourth quarter and late? But what he's doing is he's playing so much head and shoulders above those guys that he's showing you that, hey, these guys aren't in my class. I, I may be smaller and shorter and stat, you know, but I played at a power five school. I crushed there. I, I am an outlier, but yeah, you know, so that's a, that's a quintessential fourth round pick right now is, is, is Deuce Vaughn. Uh, that's a must draft fourth round pick right there. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, career outlier. So why not do it one more time? Now, do I think Dowdle and Davis are, probably have that second and third RB slot locked up for Dallas? I do. Uh, but Deuce Vaughn's going to stay on the team uh, and anything can happen there. So, um, you know, Deuce Vaughn, career outlier, 4 6. Let's go. That's Love what we're it. doing. Uh, 4 7, Boutte. Uh, sure, why not? Um, make it some plays. He's, he's been, that stock has been Dude. fucking up and down and not going to so make, might the not make the roster. Just, big right, plays. Big plays. Um, you know, Boutte uh, there. Abanacanda. Take him, stash him, but I mean, it's a, it's he's looked good, yeah, uh, for the most part. Looked fast, got, had the little knee uh, contusion there where he banged knees, mm-hmm. uh, but now it's you know it's it is Dalvin, it's Brees, it's Michael Carter, and you know then then a band of Canada. So that's a pick where you got to just say, hey, this is a long term shot. I don't know if I'm, I'd be, I'd, I'd take a shot on, you know, like I said, uh, some of those guys I mentioned back there, Malik Cunningham, another one, throw him, you know, just to. Fun, a fun pick. He, he he's probably going to get on the field for the Patriots. He looks awesome, but whatever he's doing for him, he's a lot of fun. Is he a quarterback? No, but they can put him back there at quarterback and do things. They need. They don't have a, a a great receiving core. He could be there. You could throw him back there at running back and do different things with him. Electric player. Those are the guys I want to stab on the fourth. I love Xavier Hutchinson. Throw him in the fourth. Daneric Prince. Uh, sure, take him in the fourth. McBride. Sure, take him in the fourth. Fine with it. Kraft. Sure, take him in the fourth. If anything happens to Musgraves and and Kraft look good, he he was a highly productive uh, tight end in a South Dakota State, which is why I thought uh, maybe he might start over Musgraves to begin with. And then C Rod to end this thing. Uh, you know, again, anything happens to Gibson or um, B Rob, B Rob, then he could come right in. He's had some fumbling issues in college, and I think he had a fumble. Uh, out there uh so you know yeah i had at perry in my queue at a- a- perry he has looked good for the yeah. saints man all he does is go out there and look you know like he belongs he doesn't mm-hmm. look doesn't look like it's too big for him he looks you know as soon as you know that backup team comes in and they're doing their thing um you know at perry has been really good and, and we know michael thomas hasn't been healthy shahid's already been banged up uh you know i don't i don't know if they do they still have uh Traquan, Traquan Smith on the squad. I don't know. Um, and who who is the other? Who's the tall, the big tall uh, receiver? I'm drawing a blank right now. But that that's a volatile receiving core. And At Perry uh, coming from Wake, you know, pretty pretty solid player. Like the film It was tough to watch all that mesh stuff at, at Wake, but um, big big <laughs> player, um, and you know has has looked the part in the preseason. So. Uh, anything else you want to throw in here? Keith Kirkwood is that who you're thinking of? Kirkwood, yeah, I think he had a touchdown in the with the first team when Carr played. So one more guy, the Broncos running back. Oh yeah, the uh, Broncos Jaleel, and, and, is it McLaugh, McLaughlin? Yeah, and the Packers running back. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I think it's Emmanuel something or other. All I forget. Um, but yeah, man, there, there's been you know this is this is the late round rookie stuff. This is the later in the season rookie stuff. This is when I prefer to do my draft because I have a little bit more information. I can juggle these guys around. I like to spread them all the way out and, and do all sorts of different things. Um, you know, I like to have some and then have some in the middle and then have some at the end. Uh, but my, the ones at the end are, are always my favorite. Uh, I, I feel the best about trading around. I know the most about these guys. Um, you know, things I thought I knew I don't like Musgraves and Kraft. You know, that, that Musgraves is a second round pick now, I think, in, in premium. So, um did you have that? Uh, it didn't seem like it was a rookie that, that that's on the depth chart right now. Mm. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, s- somebody will let me know. Maybe he's not a rookie. I thought he was a rookie. Um, Patrick something? Uh, Emmanuel. Oh, no. Um, he's not even listed. He's not listed on the sleeper depth chart. Emmanuel Wilson. Emmanuel Wilson. Bang. He's be- He's been explosive. Uh, 
in the preseason there. So, uh, and and the uh, the Bengals wide receiver from Princeton has looked fucking good. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, uh, but he has been pretty freaking solid uh, in the preseason. So, Bengals got a good receiving core there. Uh, they also have Charlie Jones, I believe. Uh, is that his name? And Trey Palmer also looked really good. So he, he mm-hmm. could be on this in this fourth round without a doubt. Yeah. Tyler Scott is another one that I like. He, he had a bonehead play uh, in this last one. Um, but yeah, man, I think uh, the, the McKeeve, the backup for the Eagles has looked decent too. I think he's going to run Mariota out of town. Uh, DTR, uh, he should, uh, we missed, missed him. The fact yeah. that he didn't go in this, uh, if you want to take him late third, you know, he's going to probably sit behind Watson, but people are calling for his head. So dumb. Like, calling for Watson's head. So dumb, but he, Bring looked, a DTR. he he's looks better in the preseason. He, he looks great. He's looking good in the preseason. He's running around. Yeah. He looks accurate. He looks calm. He looks cool. Yeah. It's, you know, it's going to be a long wait, but he, he's probably going to be one of those quarterbacks that just kind of always carries a little extra value with him. So he should be in here. Damn. We almost missed that. That would have been a big blow. Uh, Darnell Washington went in here. So do whatever you want with Darnell Washington. I'm not sure what the fantasy impact is going to be. He's a freak and he's going to be awesome for the Steelers and this Steelers offense boy. Yeah. Woo. It looks like a whole lot of fucking Now they trouble. were playing against two threes. Sure. But the it's, whole it's, starters it's been, were on it's there. It's been the it's, entire. They just bullied pre- them twice down the it's field. It's been the entire for preseason. Touchdowns. The yeah. entire preseason. Like, yeah. I know we talked about that Jalen Warren run at one point, uh, two, two preseason games ago. And it's like, everyone was talking about the Warren run. Let's talk about the hole that was there. I mean, you know, the hole was awesome. The, the Warren run in this last game, the hole was awesome. Yeah. You know, Najee getting those holes. I guarantee you all those stats that you're pulling for Najee for 20 yard runs and yada, yada, yada. That shit goes right the fuck out the window this year because Najee's about to have room to fucking run. And that one dude who's coming in the hole to get him is getting bodied and he's going to keep it moving. There's going to be 20 hurdle. yard, 20 yard plus runs and, yeah. and some explosives. Is he as fast as Warren? No, mm. there's room for both of those guys to exist. Um, and, and every other backfield in the, in the NFL besides four or five uh, have that. Warren deserves to play. The, the, the efficiency nerds just need to fucking cool it for a second. And, and the people, the amount of times I see on Twitter that people talk about Najee, he's just not good. It's just like, you're just such a fucking hater. Like, it is, you just are so caught up in the echo chamber. Like, Najee is good. He's not explosive, uh, but... He's going to fucking crush this year for the Steelers. The Steelers offense is going to be a whole lot of fun. Good luck stopping him at the goal line with that offense. Washington coming in as your as your 6-0 lineman. Uh, just, you know, I think, but, you know, it's going to be a nice combo platter between him and Warren. Warren's going to have some explosive plays. Najee's going to be the engine that drives that fucking offense. So, so uh, just one more Najee shot uh, for your pleasure because uh, your boy might not be here for a minute. About to... Uh, had a baby, it's a girl uh, <laughs> yeah. at, at, at any time here. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Congrats, uh, you idiot. Your second girl. Who, who? What kind of idiot would have two daughters? You know. Uh, once I had one, I was like, I wanted the boy the first time, but once I had one, I was yeah. like, God, she's yeah. she's a G. Let's go. I was pretty bummed having a girl the first time, and then the second time having a girl, I was like, All right, all right. Yeah. I don't have to try and clean ball have, sacks. I don't you know? have to worry about. <laughs> Uh, fucking all the all the dudes with all my buddies with little boys it's just i've just come to the conclusion it's like they're just they're Neanderthal. dumber they're just neanderthals yeah. until they're like 15 and then you know i just it's just like you guys are idiots like yeah just uh, i know i know yeah. i was i forget we were pregnant with our first girl we were out somewhere and there was like these two like we walk outside and there's these two boys and they're just hitting the ground with sticks <laughs> and like almost hurting themselves because they're swinging these sticks around. And then I look over and there's like two daughters just sitting there with like their legs crossed, sitting next to their mom and dad, like kind of just talking to everyone. And I was yeah. just like, all right, <laughs> all right, I'm having girls. Let's do it. Not always the case, but overall the, uh, you know, if this was a analytics discussion, they would definitely be in a prime spot for Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> so, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Uh, shout out to all the people who have fucked with us this offseason. Yeah. 5,000 subscribers this offseason. That we was our it. goal. We made it there. Uh, here's the 5,000 more. I'm sure we'll we'll hit it again in, in, in another dis- discussion. In no time. In, uh, in no time. But we appreciate you guys. Uh, be sure to go to the Discord, uh, the Patreons, uh, five-star review on the pod, whatever you got. Uh, help your boys out. Help this keep thing keep rolling so we can get closer and closer to making this a thing where we're so good now. Imagine if this is our full-time job. I know. I'm just talking shit. I'm, 
I know we're I know <laughs> we ain't shit, but hey, rankings is shit over on the Patreons though, you know. Yeah, we're we're growing and expanding. More team reviews coming. Trying to keep this thing moving. We'll so. review your team on the chat too. We might you might not make the show, but you might. I don't know. We'll do more of that stuff too. So yeah, appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>